Hello and welcome to Once Upon a Roll, a D&D podcast hosted by me, Rasputin, uh, that takes place in the Kingdom of Cortia, a homebrew setting I've been using for five years. And each episode, I bring on a new guest to do a one-on-one session of, of D&D 5e. And today, I have the wonderful Nick is Not Green. Nick, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm very excited. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing well. Uh, Nick, how might people, like, how do people know you? Whew, I mean, word Which of, of your mouth. 15 channels. <laughs> yeah, so people word might know mouth. me from Nick is not crafts, Nick is not pranks. Um, that was they, my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that channel is very problematic. Um, <laughs> How many of them are fake? Probably less than you'd expect, but. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Nick is not green. Green is not Nick are my main channels. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I talk about things. Commentary, some may call it. Others may call it interactive uh, interactive theater art. And mm-hmm. would you call it that? <laughs> Listen. Has has anyone called it that? Uh that I let's <laughs> next question. Uh, n- not physically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like I'm uh, immediately roasting and, it, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not a great yeah, thing yeah. to do to your guests. I actually, I think I watch like all of your channels. Uh, oh, hell yeah. All the way down to the he set up. Like, <laughs> yeah, he set us as like bottom of the barrel. <laughs> it's the true degenerate content. Yeah, uh, that's like, that's that's when you know you're you're in too deep. You know too much about me. <laughs> yeah. What's your D&D experience in general? Um, I played once in junior year of college with a bunch of people I didn't know super well, and Mm -hmm. I had a great time. And so I was like, ever since then, I've wanted to play, but no no one, I I can never find a way to play it. So it's been how many years? It's been like three long years or something since the last time I played, and I'm excited to jump back into it. Yeah, I think of the story for a lot of people is like they maybe play or want to play, but they like no one will run it. Like no one yeah. will DM. Like there's so many players, but very few DMs. So it's kind of like if you really want to play, you just have to DM. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is not always what, you know, people want to do. Yeah. That's why you're here. <laughs> yeah, but this is why I started the podcast <laughs> to convince people oh, yeah. to play. Yeah. Um, how many people were in that group when you? There was one DM and I think four people, including myself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty typical sized thing. Yeah. Yeah. You'll you'll find definitely that like the one on one experience is quicker and. Like, you, you know, I mean, you're the main character, you know? Hell yeah. That's what, that's the one part I didn't like about the other thing is that it wasn't all about me. All the time. Yeah. yeah I want that's everything it. to be focused on me. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly how this will go then. So it'll, it'll be the perfect experience. Awesome. <laughs> um, anything you want to say before we jump into the episode? You know, this is a story that's been in the years of of making, not your not your like world or whatever, like you said. I'm mm-hmm. talking about my specific character. It's just mm-hmm. a story that I think has been in the works for a while, and I'm just excited for everyone to see like what we put together because we we really put like whew, hours of work into this character, <laughs> and like this is a this is a passion project if if the word was ever used in its truest manner, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, certain things about the character you might think were just you and I being in a call very quickly being like, this seems funny. Let's do this. But yeah. it's, mm-hmm. I think both of us have been working on different parts of this character since before we met, you know, since before maybe we were on, we were even cursed with the gift of, of life, you know, <laughs> like this is something that I feel like has been in the making before I was even on this earth. Um, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I'm excited to like tell this story and like I hope that it inspires some people out there because um it's honestly the only reason I came on this podcast is like I needed a I needed a medium to tell something something that I think is really gonna touch some people. <laughs> the the interactive art uh mm-hmm. to its truest form. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh well <laughs> let's jump into this episode. 
of Once Upon a Roll. Hell yeah! The kingdom of Cortia has thrived for over a thousand years. In that time, it has endured war against powerful enemies, outlasted deadly feuds between its lords, and fought against evil both of this plane and others. However, during the most recent festival of the autumn sun, the sage's ritual revealed a nearly forgotten omen, the sign of Black Sun, a symbol only seen once before and it almost led to the destruction of Cortia. Panicked, the common folk in the capital city rioted, and when the dust settled, the king was dead, and his two children had disappeared in the night. The lord of the city of Edgewood, Tom Dunn, restored peace to the capital, and with no heirs of the king anywhere to be seen, he decided to sit the throne and take the position of Lord Regent. This story takes place a month before the festival of the autumn sun, in the height of summer along the northern coast of Cortia, not all that far from the city of Teldwith. You personally know Teldwith well. It's where you grew up. At an age before you can even really remember, you were found on the side of the North Country Road, all alone. The orphanage you were raised in was better than many, but you were still the only dragonborn in the whole place. And as you grew faster than the rest of the kids, it didn't take long until you and those running the orphanage agreed that you didn't fit there anymore. So since then, you've searched for a place where you would fit but you've yet to find it. So naturally, you started looking for something different, not a place where you would fit in, but a way for you to fit in, a way for you to be anyone or anything. While many, even you, have the power to transform for a period of time, few harness the ability to do so permanently, which put you on the path of Balstara the Shaper, you followed lead after lead, chasing rumors and whispers, traveling across the entire kingdom. And those leads eventually led you back to the north, near Teldwith, at Costin's Will, a small fishing village with a view of an island where Balstera apparently did many of his experiments. You step through the village's street. It's a quiet town, not much going on. For anyone, though, who might be standing outside, what uh, what do they see as you step through it? Well, they, they see a pretty tall, um, yet lanky figure. Tall for, you know, a, a human, but for a dragon born, I am um, shortest among my class in age. You know, I, I, I look like I could probably take your average human on in a fight, and maybe I would be intimidating to see for the first time by someone who hasn't seen a dragonborn but uh among my race i i sort of have been a laughing stock for my oh, whole uh, life the run to the litter is that yeah i guess you could say the run to the litter if you want to be if you want to be you know mean about it <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and i've got uh, just hand me down clothes that just don't really fit me too well because I, I grew out of them too fast and um, and there's a cat also somewhere in the town <laughs> around me. Yeah, it's a wild, just a cat uh, jumping from building to building. Uh, yeah, just like a wild cat. A stray. I mean, it, it, it's a stray that's been following you around for a little while in your travels. I imagine maybe you drop food every once in a while, you know, for it to follow behind. Yeah, and sometimes I use a toy to like uh to distract him and but then i throw mm -hmm. it out the door expecting him to chase after it and now it's out of my arm's reach and now it's <laughs> now he won't shut up you know D, D cats what can you do i mean yeah they're crazy <laughs> different a different breed literally mm -hmm. okay so a dragonborn uh small for those who know dragonborn well but uh imposing in his own way yeah all right oh uh, yeah you you walk along the town uh i mean in general you know you can see this island in the distance where there's rumors that bolstera the shaper who who seems from different studies you've seen and pieces of paper you've come across and just rumors you followed an expert in all things transmutation magic so you can see the island obviously you know you don't have necessarily a way to get to it it does seem like the village may have some boats around and there might be some other ways to get there mm -hmm. so what do you do um i'm gonna go try to walk over to one of the boats and see if i can get access to it to take it to the island yeah uh you you walk over to the coast there's uh, you know a few docks 
it's not like this is not like a big operation you know it's probably a village with maybe 20 30 people living here uh you do see a few just boats tied up um there's one or two people just kind of working putting like nets away kind of getting ready for the mm -hmm. end of the day and, and getting things prepared so there's some people there uh and definitely just a few boats tied up i want to walk over to the person who's closest to me who's next to one of the boats and ask him if there's any way i can maybe rent a boat you know maybe if he has a business like uh what like a library for boats maybe you know <laughs> <laughs> boat renter yeah <laughs> yeah, so so uh, there's like an older gentleman. He's got kind of a wispy beard, like just kind of the patchy sort, uh, wearing clothes that seem like they were really nice once, but have been worn probably every day for mm -hmm. a few too many years. Um, kind of gives you a look up and down, seemingly not used to seeing Dragonborn folk. So, uh, so what can I do for you? Uh, excuse me. I was just wondering if you happen to have any sort of, uh, like, how do I put this? Like a library for boats, like where I can take a boat and sort of use it and, and give it back to you. Yeah, we don't really have a library for boats, but, or any sort of rental service set up, but we could come to some sort of agreement. Do you take like, I, I don't know. I don't really think I have any money on me, but I could like, I, we could do like an IOU maybe. I could give you something of mine just so you know, like, uh, what do they call it? Um, collateral, you know? Mm. What are you offering for collateral? Maybe like, <laughs> I don't have, sir, I, I mean, I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I'm from an orphanage. I don't really have much. I could give you, <laughs> I could give you like, I mean, shit. I mean, I, I, I could give you like a, <laughs> if I really don't have much, I give you a piece of rope. <laughs> uh, roll, roll a persuasion check, especially mentioning like I'm from an orphanage. I, you might be able to kind oh, of uh, cut, cut at again. his, you know, empathetic side. So roll a persuasion check. A, a 10. 10. Okay. Uh, he gives you a long look. You know, you can see he pities you a bit and, and can see that like you don't have much to <laughs> offer uh but you do seem generally like a kind enough person and, and he'd say i suppose i could have you do a little bit of work for me okay um do you want me to do this like right now or <laughs> i mean it seems like you're about to go home for the day maybe let's say i take the boat i'll, I'll come back before sunrise and we can I, I can work for you all all day tomorrow Hmm. Roll another persuasion check. <laughs> this is a pretty big ask, but yeah. Or are you lying, I guess, is the bigger question. I'm, I'm stretching the truth, I'd say, you know? I'm giving them alternative facts. I would like to make it back before sun, sunrise, but if I was honest, I really don't think I will. But, but you do have an intention to do the job. Yes, I do. If you can. Okay, then just persuasion. 18. He would kind of look you up and down uh, and look over the different boats. Um, he'll give a little nod uh, and, and walk over to one. A as you see it, it looks to be like easily the one in the worst condition mm -hmm. uh, by by a long shot. A dinghy um, is what they call it. A <laughs> real dinghy. Uh, there's no holes in the bottom, but certainly some on the side. Uh, but yeah, you know, he, he walks over to it, unties it and says, I'll see you tomorrow to get some work done. Thank you, sir. I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, you know, I, I really do feel like this whole library of books thing could be a smart decision. So maybe if I come back, we could sort of become business partners or something. I really like the idea of entrepreneurship, um, especially in this field. So like, if you're ever interested. He kind of like <laughs> looks at you, then looks around the town, which seems like you're probably the first visitor they've had in a month. <laughs> and he gives a nod of... Maybe, maybe it would be a good idea. Essentially dismisses what you said and... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Unless you take his boat. I am going to use the mending can trip on the boat to try to repair the holes in the side. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So it's like a single tear takes a minute to... Okay. There, there's probably a few and it probably takes you, you know, 
10, 15 minutes uh, to get most of the ones that seem mm -hmm. bad. But it's you're able to do it through the use of your spell. And the boat looks it looks a lot better. I mean, it, you know, it's still probably the worst of the lot, but you're far less worried about it taking on water yeah. as you go along. Okay, I'm going to climb into the boat and, and take the anchor off and try to set sail. It's mostly a rowboat, so why don't you do an athletics check kind of just to see how quickly you're able to saw get across it, the... I it go well. 13. Yeah, uh, it's not too wavy of a day, even though you are kind of on the ocean proper, uh, which can certainly get rough at times, but you're able to go through it easily enough, um, push through a few tides that are leading you in ways you might not want to go, but with enough strength, yeah, you're, you're able to get there. Probably takes about an hour of rowing. Okay, I dock the boat at the closest shore and then try to make sure it's not going to float away. <laughs> yeah, you, you pull it up and, and probably pull it up even a little bit further uh, just to try to account for the high tide. If you want, you can like tie it to the, the rope to a tree. Yeah, I'll tie, I'll tie that shit to a tree. All right, I'll have you make a just a dexterity check for that to see how good your knots are. Seven. Okay. You, you tie a knot. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I tied the crap out of that knot. Um, I look over the landscape. So as you look uh, over the island, it's not a massive island in general. So you can see most of it with a glance. Uh, as you take a look, it seems like something happened here. Uh, a lot of the trees are withered away. They're, as you look out a little bit away from where you are, kind of more in the center of the island, there looks to be a lot of ruined buildings, just things kind of broken down. You're not exactly sure what's happened, but it seems like not all that hospitable of a place. Okay, I'll, I'll head towards the center of the island. I guess I'll just I'll just start walking. Yeah, uh, you you head that way. Just a couple minutes walk to get to where those buildings are, and yeah, as you take a look at them, and and you're kind of looking at the ruined buildings, you get the sense like they don't really seem old. It doesn't seem like the destruction of whatever it is and these ruins came from like age uh it seems like they were broken in some way at some point okay i'm going to try to head into the ruins okay yeah roll in investigation check six okay uh, as you look around, you know, you can see most of these buildings seem collapsed in some way or another. There's like one building where the ground seems to have caved in completely. Uh, but you can't really find a way like into a building um, or or below a building as you look around. Okay, I'm going to start walking around the perimeter of the building and see if there's anything I can find that might give me a lead okay uh roll a perception check five five <laughs> all right as you're kind of like doing your walk around just looking for something you hear a growl behind you okay i'm gonna turn around and say hey <laughs> <laughs> turning around before you even like take a look uh giving your most sheepish hey <laughs> Uh, you see uh, a bear, a brown bear, um, kind of on all fours looking at you, not necessarily burying its teeth ready to like pounce, but definitely looking a little territorial, stands bigger than you even on all fours. It, it's a pretty massive thing. Okay. I'm going to attempt to speak with him using my speak with animals spell. All right. What do you say? Hello. I mean, no harm. I just came to this island to find something I've been looking for for a long time. The bear kind of eases up a bit and then sits back. Um, oh, you can speak with me. Yeah, um, I guess that I, I came to this island using uh, a boat. This guy had some sort of, oh, what's the word? Like a library for boats, I guess. And I, um, I, I came here and I, I was- He lets you borrow a boat is what you're saying. Um, 
I, I mean, I guess so. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't really like the way you said it like that, to be honest. But yeah, I came here and I was just wondering if you do anything about um, shape shifting. The bear gives a nod, and you see it raise its one of its paws and kind of look at it and flip it over, looking at the, you know the palm and the back. I know about shape-shifting all too well. Oh, shit. Have you always been a bear? No. Oh, shit. I used to work for Balstara as one of his aides, and then eventually became one of his test subjects, and now I'm a bear, stuck here. Well, uh, what's what's your name? Vile. Oh, nice to meet you, Vile. Vile? Like a... Vile. Vi- oh. Like Vile without the L. Oh, because me it was it because he used like a vial on you to turn you into a, a bear? <laughs> no, that's just the name given to me by my mother. Well, Vaya, my my name is Eric Fez. Um, Fez is actually a, a an acronym. It stands for Frox Rolf Azeroth Zeleth. Does that name send shivers down your spine or anything? Should it? Um, yeah, like. Uh, does you does it, do you recognize the name or anything? She pauses for a moment, <laughs> and then tactfully says, "Well, I've been stuck on this island for a long while, so it's possible that I just have not uh, heard the recent news." Oh well, uh, my dad is sort of like I don't know how do I put it, like a dick, and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess I'd have to say, like, you know, I'm I'm jealous of you. I wish I wish I could turn into something else forever, and I was wondering if you knew how I could possibly do that. She looks you over for a while. I do think there's information inside that could help both of us out. See, I don't want to be a bear. This was not my choice. This was something forced on me as Balstera kind of grew mad as time went on. Oh, well, that uh, works out perfectly, actually. Um, Do you know how to get in this place? I do. Um, And I think something that could help both of us is inside. I cannot get in it as it kind of needs the deft touch of a human or humanoid. Oh, yeah. I mean, I I could do that. You have normal fingers. (laughs) She like lifts a paw. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I got it. Not very dexterous. I got normal fingers. I feel like I could I could do it. Let, lead the way. Let me see if I can help you out. All right. She walks along uh, all fours um, and and walks past a few bits of rubble and, and pushes aside a big piece of stone that as you look at it, you can see it is over some sort of trap door. There is a little, like on, on the sides of this door though, it's not like just a typical handle. It's kind of this thing where seems like you would need human sized hands to kind of slip in mm. um i mean it's essentially uh an animal protection look you know yeah <laughs> the, the sort of thing that is uh meant to keep bears out of your uh food when you're camping uh <laughs> mm-hmm. okay i use the lock and i open up the trap door sweet yeah you uh just slide your hands in and fish around a bit and find the clasps in the back and unlatch them and it opens up okay let's uh head inside via all right um you can lead the way uh um okay uh yeah i'll go okay i'll walk in yeah uh you walk down a few steps of stairs uh, via kind of squeezes in behind it's it's a pretty decently sized door uh but you know, she is still quite, she is a bear, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she is able to squeeze through it behind and both of you come out into a bigger room. Uh, you step forward and you see what looks like, you know, in the right circumstance would be a pretty cozy room. Books line the shelves. Uh, there's a little reading chair in the corner, but all of it's covered a fair few layers of dust. Uh, you see there's a fireplace and above it is a portrait of a thin man wearing noble-like clothes. Uh, his hair is dark and cut short, and there is no hint of a smile on his face. Uh, in, in the picture as well, behind him, 
uh, or an assortment of beasts, creatures, and, and humanoids of various ancestries. Who lives in this place? This was where Balstera did his studies. Um, different things about transmutation. He knew it all better than anyone else. That's why I wanted to learn from him. Who the heck is this Balstera guy? His name sounds like like a pill that old people take. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she laughs as much as a bear can laugh. Uh, <laughs> well, he was a scholar at a university in Sanathalor to the north. He was kicked out of it for his studies as they were too cutting edge for the elves there. And he made his way down to Cortia where he established his studies here. How did you find him? I was interested in the kinds of magic, so I sought him out and asked for an apprenticeship. And he turned you into a goddamn bear? Well, as time went on, he wanted more and more test subjects, and it was harder and harder to come across them, so he crossed what I would say an ethical line. Yeah, I'd say. How long have you been like this? Well, uh, the destruction of this place happened... She seems to kind of be looking. You get the sense, like, it's been long enough where, like, she's not counting mm -hmm. years. I don't know exactly how many I've been stuck. It's hard to make this swim across, and I've been hoping to find a way inside to reverse this at some point. Holy shit. Do you think this Balstera guy is still alive? Like, what? we got to do something about this. He may be alive, but he hasn't come out in all this time. When everything broke down, it was because he got a little too ambitious uh, for his own good, and he transmuted a rabbit into a dragon. Oh my gosh. Which then destroyed the lab and maybe killed him, hopefully killed him. I'd like it if he were dead. And it flew off and made it almost impossible for me to get in until now. Well, Vaya, I just want to say, I know what it's like to be alone, to feel like there's no way out, to feel like you're stuck in a form that you do not belong to. And so I vow to you that I, Eric Frox Rolth, Ezareth Zelith, aka Fez, you can call me Fez because we're friends now, I promise and vow to you that we will get you back to where you were normally and if Balstera or whatever his stupid name is is still out there we're gonna go and we're gonna kill that guy she gives a nod that's it you're just gonna <sighs> okay that's fine um i thought that was pretty captivating but i i guess thank you fez no okay yeah Thank no, you. it's fine. Don't you don't have to. Don't. <laughs> too little, too, too, too little, little, too late. Too late. <laughs> You're, yeah, I don't need you to butter me up now, man. Uh, <laughs> listen, where do we go from here? What what can we do to to get closer to turning you back and getting me what I need? Well, I was entered the lab from a different entrance that just went right into where he would do various experiments. So I, I've never actually come in this way, I would assume that there would be some pathway through. I, I don't necessarily see one immediately. Uh, I look around the room for any possible out. Okay. Uh, roll a perception check. Six. Six. You know, you see the painting. You see the fireplace. You see the chair. You see the bookshelves. There must be a way. <laughs> But you can't necessarily find anything about them right now that sticks out to you as uh, especially meaningful. Huh. I want I want to look at where the floor meets the wall and see if there's any possible, maybe small, exits around that could possibly be of use to uh, to help me escape. Okay, so just kind of like scanning, like a close look at all the corners of the yeah. room, you know, where the shelves meet the floor and where the fireplace meets the floor and all yeah. that. Uh, yeah, roll investigation. 15. Okay. Yeah, you spend a few minutes kind of doing a quick look around uh, on, on the floor, or a, a thorough look, uh, not just quick, but thorough. Um, and it doesn't seem like th there are no visible 
like scratch marks on the floor from something moving in and out. Uh, it all seems very sturdy. It seems like that is how it is designed to be. And, you know, nothing that has been moving or that could move. Well, Vio, the only other idea I have is to piss on the fireplace because I really have to go. Um, do you have any ideas for what we should do? I mean, are we just going to sit in this room forever? She, uh, kind of looks around and, you know, it's like, um, no, there, there must be a way through. I, I don't think pissing on the fireplace would do it. Has that sort of thing worked for you in the past? Uh, no, but I always had this, like, I always had this dream where like, uh, not like a dream dream, but like a daydream where like, I am trying to like escape a room and I piss on the fireplace and then like, there's like a hole in the back. I just feel like to be honest, I was just really hoping you would say that, like, oh, I'd spark something. It was stupid. Never mind. Just forget I said anything. Uh, yeah, she she does look at you. And, you know, you're not really used to reading bears all that well. Yeah. Uh, but you get the sense in her head is like, this is the person that came to <laughs> to save like, yeah. all people. <laughs> this is who I'm stuck yeah. with. But uh, you know, we'll we'll take whatever help she can. Uh, and and she just kind of starts. She's like, you keep looking around, and she kind of just starts like pushing on different bookshelves to see if they do anything. I want to ask her, Vio, what race were you before you were turned into a bear? I was a half elf. I am a half elf. Oh, wow. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, I, I've wanted to be a half elf for a long time. Uh, I, I, it, it's, a, it's always been my dream, and I always feel like I would fit in with you guys. Uh, let's just say that the Dragonborn community doesn't really appreciate me. She gives a look. Where'd you grow up? Well, long story short, I, I grew up with a lot of uh, a lot of other kids who didn't really look like me in a orphanage, and uh, I, I grew out of it pretty quickly. Yeah, uh, people people don't really like when uh, you start towering over them, and you know, I, I know I, I'm not much of an intimidating guy, but my size compared to these other these other races it seemed to. Uh, uh, you know, it's 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 been tough. Let's just say that. She gives a nod. So mostly around humans, I suspect. Yeah, it seems it seems to be humans. Yeah, those yeah humans. Well, it can be hard even for us half elves to be surrounded and raised by humans. They often look for the differences in folks. Yeah, those guys suck. Humans, my right. <laughs> Goddamn humans, dude! I never turn into a human. Is this, uh, this Balsera, Balsera, Bal ba is this guy human? He was an elf. Hmm. He's an elf, if he's alive. An elf, like Will Ferrell. <laughs> Does Will Ferrell exist mm -hmm. in this universe? Yes. <laughs> Will Ferrell is actually uh, an elder god. Uh, no. <laughs> um, I'm gonna help inspect the bookshelves with Vaya. Yeah, roll investigation. 17. Okay. You know, she's kind of like with a paw, like pulling back each of the books individually, right? Mm -hmm. But like just to see if it triggers something. And you're kind of thinking like there must, if there were something like that that would open it, there would be some sort of like latch on the back mm. that would do it. So you kind of like climb up to the top and, and look behind and move them out a bit. And it does not seem like any of them have any sort of uh, hinge or trigger that would cause it to open. God damn it. Seems like nothing on the floors, nothing uh, 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 on the bookshelf. I, I want to look up at the roof and see if there's any anything that looks like might be able to get through. Uh, in the ceiling of the room, it's just, yeah, it's just a ceiling. Just, <laughs> God damn it. you know, some wood structures. Yeah. All right, Vi, I'm like a second away from pissing on the fireplace. You got anything else? Um. No, I mean, if you, if it's not the bookshelves and you've checked kind of the different where the where the wall meets the floor, then maybe there is an answer near the fireplace. Okay, I'm pissing on the fireplace. <laughs> okay, uh, you see her shake her head and like turn away, 
as you do it. Um, uh, yeah, you, you just piss it on this fireplace. Oh, I'm pissing. Yeah, I've been holding this All one right. in for a while. <laughs> All right. As you go to do that, you know, you put a hand out, right? Like yeah. as, as one does. And as you put your hand out, it's kind of like perfectly in line with your, with your height with the painting. And as your hand kind of grazes the painting, you notice it kind of like shimmer. Oh. I grab the painting. So as you like kind of, are you like the side of the painting? Yeah, yeah. I try to like see if it will come off of the wall. It, it is like so stuck on there. It is very sturdy. Okay, I take a good look at what is on the painting. Yeah, it is who you assume to be Balstero, just standing in the front, you know, smileless. And behind him are all different assortment of beasts and creatures um, that you assume are a result of his studies. I tell Vaya, you know, there's a rumor, this myth that goes around that Dragonborn have like barbed penises like cats do. <laughs> and that you know, that's not true, right? Like they don't, they, it's just like a normal... It's just like a human penis that looks like a, like a dragon, like scales, I guess. It's not barbed. I've done many studies on anatomy of all different folks with all different sorts of ancestries, yes. Okay, I just wanted to make sure you knew that because I, 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 I just felt like it was like an elephant in the room um, <laughs> that like when I said I was going to piss on the fireplace, you started thinking about whether or not dragons. I was not okay, thinking okay, no, yeah. about Okay, yeah. Um, do you, what? Do, you re you recognize this painting? Did you have anything to do with this? <laughs> I haven't seen it before, but it seems like the sort of thing Bolstero would make of himself. You think I should piss on it? <laughs> He'd deserve it. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll piss on the painting. <laughs> uh <laughs> Uh, God damn it. <laughs> uh, this is the most D&D &D thing in the fucking world. Uh, yeah, as as you go to do that, you expect there to be like an immediate splatter, right? As mm -hmm. as uh, piss would hit canvas. And there isn't. It seems to go through it. And almost on the other side, you can hear it like hitting the ground. Oh, shit. Bye, ya. My piss, it went right through the painting. I think it's I think it's a optical illusion. Hmm. As your stream of piss ends, she <laughs> turns I'm still uh, pissing. <laughs> and walks over and then tentatively reaches a claw through and you see it pass through. Hmm. All right. Let's go. Oh shit. This is like in Minecraft when you put up the painting and you can go just uh, walk right yeah, through. Yeah, okay, I'm walking through. I'm walking through the painting. <laughs> Yeah, you uh, kind of climb through it, and uh, she follows behind you. Uh, as you jump down, you hear the splash of water, which for a second you're like, oh, is is this a uh, you know, flooded hallway? And then you're like, no, no wait, yeah. that's uh, <laughs> where I just pissed. Mm. Uh, and yeah, you uh, step forward. And, and as you look, it seems to be a just long hallway. There is a door at the end of it. Yeah, let's, let's walk towards the door and... Okay. Give it a give it the handle a jiggle. Yeah, roll a perception check. Five. <laughs> you hear it just half a second after your foot leaves it. Just the clicking of a plate below you uh, that seems to be on the floor, and then you can hear what seems to be something like being pulled back and then shooting out. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh my god. If I roll a one and I just fucking die right away, that'd be awesome. I got an eight. Eight. Uh, you take six points of piercing damage as like a dart flies out at you. Uh, more are coming. What do you do? I'm going to try to use wild shape and turn into a cranium rat. Okay. <laughs> uh, you just turn into a rat uh, and you're low to the ground. You can see... Uh, as you shift your form, the darts continue to fire out. Um, the, you are well below where they are, though, now. Uh, so completely out of the way. Uh, and, and it seems like multiple are firing at different levels, right? Mm -hmm. Like three of them at different levels. But regardless, you are too low to be hit by them. You just scurry along. Um, I scurry along and I look up at Vaya to see she's okay. 
Yeah, she was a few steps behind you, and it seems like she has not been hit by the trap yet, but the trap is continuing to fire in some capacity, and it seems like she won't be able to get through at this moment without taking some sort of damage as, as you get to the door. Okay. Vaya, I'm wondering, um, there's this there's a spell that they taught me um, called Bark Skin. And listen, I'm not going to make you run through the arrows if you don't want to run through the arrows. But if I cast this on you, it should give you bark-like skin. I can't promise that it won't suck. But if you want to get through this, that's the only way I can think of. Okay. Are you still in rat form? Or? Yeah, I'm sort of just like really low. So I don't know that you can... Well, wait. Hmm. I guess it's hard to know because normally if you're in rat form you wouldn't be able to talk, but you did do speak with animals. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna say that to have continued the conversations with Vaya earlier, this is my bad, I should have been more on it. Um, You would have had to cast it probably two more times. Okay. So you've used three first level slots so far. Okay, okay. And yeah, I'm gonna say though, ruling will be that you can continue to speak with her in animal form. Okay, okay. Because of the spell. Um. So I, yeah, I, I yell up to Vaya and hope she hears me as a little rat and ask her if she'd be okay with me casting that spell. Yeah. So if you wanted to do it, you would have to run pat back to her, turn back to human, cast the spell, and then you could wild shape again. And so, yeah, I turn into a rat. I scurry over to her out of the way of the arrows, turn back in to Eric. And then I ask her this question. Yeah, that would be fine. Okay, here goes nothing. Bark skin. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> yeah, you see uh, her fur start to harden. It almost looks like it's matted for a second, but it's actually just a thin layer of bark uh, appearing over her fur. Okay, Go, let's let's see it. Let's let's see if we can do this. All right. <laughs> Are you uh, ratting again? And I'm going rat mode. Okay. Scurry on over. All right. So that is your second wild shape. Cool. Yeah. You scurry over and she just kind of sprints through. I'll have her do a roll. Yeah. She is able to get through it pretty quickly. Um, a handful of the ones that would have hit her just bounce right off. She does take a little damage still, but definitely you get the sense that she would be in far, far worse shape without you doing bark skin. Hell yeah. And yeah, the two of you are at the other side of the hall. Okay, let's give the door a jingle jingle. Are you back to your dragon? Yeah, 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 yeah. I assume, yeah. (laughs) Okay, so yeah, those are your wild shapes. If you'd like to take a short rest at a point, uh, you could do that and get them back. That probably would involve, like the the benefit is you would get them back. The downside is if you wanted to talk to Vaya, you would have to cast talk to animals. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll still just go for the door and see. Yeah, you open the door and and you see this room has like some of the bits from the ceiling have fallen down um, and and light's not really shining through, but it definitely is looking pretty worn. Along the walls, you can see beds that have straps on them and there are containers that are long since broken, but but the, the glass containers are stained with dark green liquid from whatever you you know whatever was once in them at some point uh in the very far corner of the room you can kind of hear the sound of low breathing i uh, i don't really have a good feeling about this but the do you, do you see that do you hear that in the corner yeah you see her kind of take a defensive stance um and Then you see one set of eyes turn towards you, dark green and glowing, and then a second, and then a third, and then forms step out towards you, long, lanky, skin taut on their bodies, grayed from some sort of experiment or something, long, sharp, jagged teeth of all uh, different sizes pointing different directions step out towards you. Gross. I'm going to try to use animal friendship. 
damage. I know that's <laughs> my last. Roll um, a nature check. I don't have a good feeling about this. Okay, here we go. 21. As you're looking at these things, they do not seem like animals. Okay. You like they they seem like humanoid in some ways, but push past the point of humanity. You don't know tons about it, but you know, they remind you of things that you probably heard in zombie and ghost and ghoul stories mm -hmm. from, you know, when you were in the orphanage. Fi, I'm not feeling too good about this. Do you, do, what what are we going to do here? Uh, you see her kind of in a almost ready to lunge position, growling. We're gonna kill them. Oh God! Okay, okay, um, okay. I, I, are you sure? Do you think they maybe maybe they want to hang out? Maybe we could help them. I don't. Uh, the three forms start running at you. Gosh. One just straight towards the other two, kind of winging out to the side, uh, sprinting towards you. I'm gonna have your roll initiative. Okay. Okay. Six. All right. Uh, so first up is going to be Vaya. She rolled the highest, so she is going to go first. She is uh, the one that's kind of flanking on the right side, which is the side closer to her. She is going to bound towards it and um, is going to slam it with it, her claw and then take a bite at it. Oh, shit. So her claw attack hits and she does some damage. You know, it just kind of gets slashed, and what should be blood uh, looks to be some kind of dark, thick, ickery liquid. And then, yeah, she's going to take a bite at it then, um, and that also will hit for some damage. The thing looks kind of hurt, but it is still up. Uh, next up is going to be the one that was in the middle that is running towards you, and it is going to get up to you right in your face and kind of like you know, like re-deads or whatever, and Zelda kind of like <laughs> jump on you and try to wrap on you and, and bite at your uh, neck. It rolled a four. What's your AC? 15. 15. A four does not hit, so oh. it kind of uh, bites at you, but you're able to like, it's like, no, no fuck this. <laughs> like those and, fucking Half-Life Alex face. Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, and now it's your turn. I say, oh shit, a bunch of times, <laughs> and then I, <laughs> I look towards the thing on the left, and I try to cast a uh, acid splash on him. Okay, sweet. What is your spell save, DC? 14. What kind of save does it have to make? Must succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 1d12 poison damage. Con. Okay, so it needs to get a 14. It got a 13, oh, so much. that'll hit. Um, okay. Roll damage. Roll 1d12. Eight. Eight. That's good damage, yeah. Uh, the ghoul yells out as acid starts to burn at its skin. Oh my god! That's, that's so gross! Ew! Yeah. <laughs> I just have yelling. It kind of blends in with the color of its blood a bit. Yeah. Um, cool. So that is your action. Anything else you want to do? Uh, I'm going to try to turn around and do a shillelagh. <laughs> Don't do what shillelagh means. Okay, so yeah, you have your spear, so you'd kind of like to take the blunt end of it and make it really hard with Shillelagh. Yeah, I mean, I guess I might as well just use the spear. I mean, how many actions do I have? Just the one, and then... You have one action. You could use a bonus action to Shillelagh, like, the one side of your spear if you want. Does that just turn it like that, and then I have to attack next round? Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, let's just... Yeah, I don't have to... I don't really want to do anything cool. else. Yeah. All right, uh, the one that you just through acid at is going to run up to you and slash at you with its claws as the other one is kind of trying to grab and bite on it doesn't really have a good place to bite but yeah it's going to slash with its claws that is a 13 to hit what's your ac again uh 15 like 15 right yeah so 13 will miss so it'll just kind of nice. bounce off of your armor um the other one that's in combat with via is going to bite at her uh it's a 20, so that one will hit. Oh, no. She takes damage. Cool. Uh, Vaya is starting to look pretty hurt. You know, you can kind of see the blood coming down quicker and quicker. Yeah, definitely definitely not looking great. Um, damn. Now it's back to her turn where she's going to attack the one in front of her. Uh, that's a nat 20. Nice. So that'll crit. Let's go, Vaya. 
Hell yeah. She misses with her claws, but nat 20 on the bite. So the one attack, the ghoul kind of ducked behind, and then the other, she just reaches out with her jaw and clenches it on the neck, and you see the head just gets severed from the body. Yeah. And yeah, it collapses to the ground. All this gross, dark, oozy <laughs> ichor is in her mouth, and she's kind of like they're spitting. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, a, a bit. Um, but it is it is vanquished. She did kill it. All right. Then there's the one attacking you. She's going to bite at you again. This one is a 16 to hit. So yeah, that'll hit you. Shit. You take 10 points of piercing damage as it bites into your arm. Um, and you can see kind of the, the oozy liquid on its face, like going down your white dragonborn scales, staining it a bit. Damn. All right. Uh, you are up. Oof. I'm going to just go for a two-handed spear on the ghoul that was on the left who is still standing. Okay, yeah. Uh, roll the hit. I rolled the 13. 13 hits. And then it was six. Cool. Yeah, you uh, stab into it and immediately, you know, can continue to see the dark ichor moving down and moving around your spearhead. Uh, it's looking pretty hurt, but it is still standing. Hmm. Let's see if I have any other bonus. Do I have any other bonus action stuff besides the shillelagh? Um, pretty much just the transforming into animals, which you've used your wild shape yeah. so far. I'll, I'll do the shillelagh on my spear. Yeah, you touch your spear, and you obviously you have the strong pointy end, but you can feel the you know, long uh, wooden part of it just harden a fair bit. Seems like it would hurt a lot to get hit in the head with it. Awesome. Um, all right, so then there was the one on the left who was attacking you before, is going to make some slashes with his claws. That is a 14 to hit, which will miss. These guys have like nothing to their attack. <laughs> Damn, I should, should have thrown in a dragon to kill you. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So that one will miss. Then Vaya is up, so she will run and attack the one that's like kind of directly in front of you. Her first attack unfortunately misses, but the second one does hit. So yeah, she claws at it and does a decent bit of damage. Epic. That ghoul is focused on you, though, still, uh, even though Vi is behind <laughs> it, like, slashing at okay. it. Okay. <laughs> uh, but it, it is going to keep trying to uh, murder you, you know? Yeah, makes sense. There's a big bear behind it, but... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They maybe don't seem like they're thinking it through all yeah. that much. Uh, that is a 12. Dang, I got to roll better. <laughs> you have a pretty good AC. All right, uh, you're up. Fez is up. Okay, so I want to use the shillelagh and stab the dude on the left again. Okay, so using shillelagh, you, you want to hit him with your... Yeah, the new the new sharp end of the, of the spear. Well, so there's the sharp end, and shillelagh is more of like making it like really hard and blunt. Oh, okay. You yeah. know, like, but it is magical. I see. Yeah, so I try to bop him in the head with the blunt end. All right, yeah, roll uh, roll the hit. I rolled a seven. You you just swing over the God head. God damn it. And miss. Is there anything else you want to do? I just look really tired and upset. Like, I like no. this is something that I'm not used to, and I, and I want it to stop as soon as it can. Um, yeah, so the one that is less engaged with you, the one that, like, didn't get the bite in, is going to see Vaya attacking behind and, and swing at her with uh, his claws. Uh, it would normally hit her AC, but she still has a uh, bark skin. <laughs> oh. Actually, roll a constitution saving throw for me. Okay. Because this is a concentration spell. You got hit. 13. 13, yeah. So you still have the concentration on bark skin, so it, it stays up. Um, and yeah, normally this would have hit her, but uh, as, as she has like 16 AC because of bark skin, uh, the claws bounce off. Sweet. Uh, she is going to turn her attention and attack that one then. It hits, and uh, with her claw, <laughs> this is why you bring a bear along. Uh, with her claw, she just slams it in the head. You had done most of the work. It was pretty close to being dead, <laughs> uh, but she you know, she gets the kill credit. She kills steals uh, from you. <laughs> and uh, takes the second one out. And then, yeah, there's the one right in front of you who is going to bite at you again. 
Uh, that is a uh, 21 to hit, which will hit yeah. for six damage. Uh, not damage. you. Okay, so I'm at 20 now. Um, I'm just going to go for a spear to the face. Okay. Hold the hit. Eight. Eight unfortunately misses. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All right. Vaya is just going to clean up. Vaya will attack it. One of those hits, one misses. Okay. She does a little bit of damage to it. It is still up and rolling, uh, but it is looking pretty torn asunder and pretty close to death. But it does get to go first before you. God damn it. <laughs> That's an 11 to hit, and you're at 15, so that'll miss as it uh, takes a desperate slash with its claws at you. Now it's you. What do you do? I, ye- I let out a yelp, and I lift the spear with both my hands in the air, and I go for a final kill. All right. Roll the hit. 24. Oh, is that a is that a nat 20 for you? Hell yeah. Okay, perfect. Perfect. I know. Perfect I set up timing. I set up the whole thing. That was awesome. <laughs> Imagine if I just fucking yeah. missed. <laughs> I was kind of hoping yeah, you didn't that it, it would make it would have made <laughs> yeah. sense. Oh, yeah, you pull back your spear in desperation after taking all these slashes, uh, looking worse for wear, uh, watching Vaya do all the work and steal your kills, and you pull your spear back and just jab it right in this ghoul's uh, mouth as it's, like, going for another bite at you. Uh, You just push it through its skull and then pull your spear out, and it collapses to the ground. I fall down to my knees, and I, I start crying. (laughs) <laughs> Vaya is kind of like in the corner of the room seemingly spitting out blood from the ghouls uh, trying to get it out of her mouth as best she can and, and largely does not pay attention to the crying I start going damn it damn it damn it I'm punching the ground and I I am I'm really pissed after probably like a minute of you like continuing to do that Vaya like turns what's wrong I, 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 I've never, I've never killed anything before. Okay, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not cut out for this crap. I, I can't. I, 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 I don't know if I could keep going. I, 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 I thought this would be like this big hero's journey, and I do all this stuff, and like I can't even. I half the time I can't even hit anything. I mean, I, I, I that, that was that was scary. That was freaking scary. She gives a look. Um, roll an insight check for me. Twelve. Twelve. Yeah, she gives a, a, a long look. And again, I mean, A, you've never been great at reading people in general. Um, <laughs> but it's hard to pick up on different facial cues or quirks mm-hmm. of a bear. Uh, but she does seem to be looking at you with as much empathy as, as she can muster. Well, if it makes you feel any better, those things were already dead. They weren't of the living. You've killed something that's undead. So does that even count as killing something? Oh man. I mean, that's that's kind of a slippery slope fallacy right there. I mean, it, it turns into well, what do we consider living? You know, it, it, is is it okay to kill an animal, but not okay to kill a human? I mean, I mean, Vi, I don't know. Honestly, like I don't, I I I just don't. I'm not really. I. I still feel like shit. I mean, what, what, <sighs> you know, I, I'm sorry. Okay. You tried to make me feel better. Um, and I, I, I exploded, you know, and, uh, it's not what friends should do, you know? So, so th- thank you. I just, I should, I should be saying thank you. I, w- I wouldn't have been able to survive without you clawing the shit out of that thing's back. She nods. And I wouldn't have survived without you, uh, Tanking a lot of the hits. Okay, well, yeah, you didn't. You could all. You could have. Or. Yep. Casting. Thank the box you. Head. That's what I. That's what I meant, was hoping you'd say, but. Um. Yeah, uh, it's fine. Okay, I just need to collect myself. Um. Is there is there somewhere where we could sit down and just like, what? How do I say this? Take a chill pill for a second. We could rest here for a bit if you need a moment. Yeah, let's do that. All right, yeah, you can take a short rest. So a few things. You get your wild shapes back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't get any spells back. Shit, I never conjured a goddamn animal. That would have freaking helped. <laughs> yeah. 
God damn yeah, it. Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was like, you were using all your backup stuff. I was like, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, I'll just let them fucking <laughs> take the hits. That's a D&D. &D, yeah. yeah. Um, cool. If you want, you can use Cure Wounds. Uh, that would use a first level spell, and you might want to save some spell slots to continue talking to Vaya, because after this, like during this short rest would make it so you lose that connection of Speak to Animals. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's roll one of the hit die. I rolled a five. Sweet. So you heal five. Yeah, we'll just we'll we'll stick with that for now. I'll survive. Yeah, you see Vaya kind of looking at her wounds, uh, and she seems to heal some as well. Oh, nice. Let's do one more hit die, just to just to give me a little extra something something. And I rolled a seven on that. Sweet. Thirty two. Cool. Well, Vaya, I think. Uh, do you want to get a move on on this thing? Maybe get closer to what we're looking for. I mean, if, if anything, now's the time where we need to decide whether or not we're we're all in or we're or if we're gonna head back. I don't have a life in this world as a bear, so I'm all in. If you are, well, I'm all in no matter what, regardless of if you are. But your help would be appreciated. Jeez. Oh, okay. Um. You know what? Screw it. Yeah. I mean, what? Do you know how many hours it is until sunrise? By the way. Do you have a watch on you or something? <laughs> she uh, looks up at the ceiling. Uh, you probably, you know, you, you were came coming into the town near like seemingly the end of their work day. You probably got to the island as the sun was starting to like crest on the horizon. Mm. Um, so you assume it's nighttime. You know, you assume it's not super close yet, just based on how the passage of time would work. Yeah. Um, but you have no idea exactly what time it is uh, down here. Well, if I go back now, I'm going to have to freaking boat through the night. And then I have to wait till the morning with the dinghy. And then there is no point. Let's just go. Let's just do it. Screw it. You know? Yeah, there is no door in this room to, to the next room. But there is a, a broken wall that seems to have a little passageway forward. Okay, let's. I start walking through uh, the broken yeah. wall. You move through as Vaya tries to go through it as well. You know, her back kind of hits part of the wall and some rubble falls down, but is able to get through. Also, to be talking to Vaya, you'll have to mark off another. Oh, yeah, let's do that. First level. Okay. Cool. You move through this little tunnel way and it leads into a relatively big chamber. Um, one that unfortunately seems to have largely seen whatever the effects of the destruction. Uh, it seems like it got the brunt of it. You can see the floor of this room is uh, caved in a fair bit. And on the other side, you can see a doorway, but there is a 30 foot gap uh, between where you stand and that doorway. As you look down, the hole isn't terribly deep. Um, maybe 25, 30 feet, but there do seem to be all sorts of pointy and, and sharp pieces of rubble that uh, you, you'd probably rather not fall on oh, Lord. Uh, down below. Well, Vaya, you got any ideas for this one? I mean, I don't, I, I don't think either of us are going to make this jump. She kind of looks at like the runway she'd have for jumping and, the, <laughs> and then the gap and say, I agree, I don't think we can make this jump. Okay. Uh, okay. Problem solving skills. Not looking great here. Huh. What to do? What to do? I look around and see if there's any other way across. It looks like if a way, if there will be a way across, it is one that will have to be made in one way or another. You get the sense like maybe if you got over to, like if you went down into the pile, which probably would hurt, um, you could maybe climb the other side of the wall. Mm. Like that's possible, but it doesn't, you know, doesn't seem like the optimal approach, especially as it looks pretty nasty down there. Oh, Lord. Huh, what could I do here? If I was to turn into an animal again, would it make it less painful depending on the animal for me to jump down? 
I mean, I, I think it all depends on, yeah, I think it all depends on what you pick, right? Like, yeah. uh, you know, there are animals who are light on their feet, you know, can fall like, right. If you drop an ant, yeah, <laughs> like it doesn't get hurt. I don't know that you can't really turn into an ant. I don't think, but no, I'm going to, let's see. I'm trying to see what my best, what my best angle is here. I say Geronimo and I jump and turn myself into a frog. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, shape shift into a frog as, as you make kind of the fall down. Roll me a dexterity saving throw as, as you jump down okay. just to see if you can stick the landing. 19. 19. Yeah. You, uh, you know, like even turning into a frog and doing this is a bit of a risky maneuver. <laughs> um, but you are able to kind of time it just right where when you transform, it slows your momentum down a bit and you kind of get that light touch uh, as a frog on a uh, bigger piece of rubble that doesn't seem immediately like it would, uh, you know, impale you. So you, you are on the far end of it and, and you can kind of just hop from piece to piece mm -hmm. uh, as, as you go along, uh, avoiding stepping on things that, that would probably hurt a fair bit yeah. if you were to walk through on foot. And yeah, uh, where do you want to go? First, I want to look around and see if there's anything that could help me get uh, by a cross. Roll uh, investigation. I rolled 11. As you're kind of hopping around looking for stuff like... You know, you get the sense with maybe enough time you could pull different pieces of rubble and maybe and with enough time and also enough strength, uh, you know, you can maybe pull certain pieces of rubble from one side to the other. But it definitely, you know, there's nothing that's like an easy, like, make a makeshift bridge by setting a ladder down, you know, like it, it would all take a fair bit of work yeah. and kind of you would not be able to be a frog while doing it so it might risk you being down there and you're probably not strong enough to pull it up anyway okay i'm gonna hop my way over to the other side where i can turn back into myself and climb up okay um <laughs> so uh your your two options here is you can either turn back into your your dragonborn form like as you get to the edge and then you'll take a little bit of piercing damage for kind of standing in this rubble is just how mm -hmm. it works um or you can try to time it where like you do a hop as a frog and then <laughs> mid transformation but you will have to like make a roll to see whether or not you can grab onto the side oh yeah i'm for sure doing that though naturally okay <laughs> sweet uh make uh, just do another dexterity saving throw or dexterity check Pulling off the jump. 16. 16, yeah. Uh, you transform back into your dragonborn form and just grab the side. Uh, there's a few nice handholds uh, in different parts of the structure that are there. Uh, and yeah, you grab onto the side and then are easily enough able to just climb up uh, and get to where you need to go. I turn around, I do a little bit of one of those gymnast bows at Baya and I go, pretty impressive right she nods that that was yeah you know <laughs> of all the ways you've solved different problems that is probably the least weird <laughs> okay uh <laughs> it's an interesting way to compliment me but i'll take it um listen via it's not really looking good i don't know if you have any ideas about how to get across but i am uh starting to get worried that i may have to may have to come back and, and figure something out. Um, do, you, do, you, do you think... You can't leave me. I got you this far. You can't leave me behind. Fire. I mean... <sighs> you're a goddamn bear. <laughs> I mean, what am I... So, what do you want me to do? Turn you into a freaking... I, 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 you know, I don't mean to be rude. I'm just like... Do, what, do you have any ideas? What, what do you think we should do? Do you have any spells or anything that can that can help uh, she kind of you can see like a little bit of just panic setting in you know with the possibility that you might go on hmm i think i think long and hard oh my gosh there's got to be something 
I mean, oof, maybe I could conjure some sort of beast that could just like, how, how high of a level animal can I conjure? You can uh, conjure up to CR2. All right, Vaya, I'm going to try something that may be a bad idea. <laughs> um, hear me out here. What if I conjured the biggest animal I could into the rubble and then you sort of walked across it like a bridge? <laughs> um, I suppose that could work. Um, but if it dies, it will vanish. Um, that's a, that's a, that's a real good point. Um, <laughs> it's a pretty stupid idea, I guess. Uh, I don't really know. But, why. but certainly, maybe finding something that you can summon to to help get me across could could be a great plan. Just have to get the right thing. I mean, you are a bear. That's that's what I'm looking at here. You know, it's tough because what what do you want me to get? Like a a giant vulture that's going to carry you across or something? Well, well, yeah. No, I mean that's how. I mean, <laughs> I think that would work. What's the rating of giant vulture? Um. The rating or the, uh, the CR of them. Uh, one, one. Okay, so you could do two of them. They're large beasts, which is the same. Yeah. As she is, so if you had two, um, stupider things have happened. You know. <laughs> well, Jesus. I mean, it's the only thing I can think of. Let's do it. Conjure two giant vultures. <laughs> Yeah, just two massive birds uh, appear on either side of Vaya. <laughs> All right, um, you're going to do a strength check at advantage. Okay. And um, add one to whatever you roll. Okay, so it should be 13 then. 13. Okay. Uh, yeah, the two are able to lift Vaya up. It's not necessarily convincing, you know, <laughs> like... <laughs> It's not an easy journey. Okay. It's slow going, and they aren't able to get as much altitude as they need to like get her full clear across. You, as she's coming towards, and they're kind of pulling on her fur, and she's hanging down, looking panicked. You do see it looks like her legs might clip the bottom, like of of uh, you know, like the kind of edge of where this where you're standing. Uh, do you try to do anything? Lord. I just, I just realized I have my breath weapon also. I really, I really, yeah. I really sh shit the bed on that last fight, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I know I keep keep learning shit as I'm. That's D and D, you know. Yeah. I mean, unless you have some sort of spell that could help, you could just like kind of try to, you know, run over and help pull her forward as they get close. Yeah, I'm gonna reach reach and see what I can do to help. Okay. Roll strength. 21, baby. 21. Uh, that's a nat 20, too. Yeah. Huh? Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, good timing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as, like, it, her legs are about to hit, you kind of just lean out and help, like, just lift it a little bit so she's able to clear. Uh, and right as she gets past, like, uh, so so is has firm ground below her, the vultures, like, kind of just drop her exhausted and fly off to the corner uh like breathing heavy mm. i think you still have them for how long does conjure animals work concentration up to one hour sweet yeah so i mean they're still around hell if, yeah <laughs> if you'd like i was kind of pissed that i used up all my things but i guess i got a couple of vultures with me now yeah um i would say that like they'd kind of be moving around in an uncomfortable sort of way as like Vaya is, you know, like yeah. in some of these hallways, but they, they'd be able to squeeze enough to follow along. Yeah. Depending yeah. on the room, they might not be able to fly all that much, but this is a bigger one. Can I talk to these animals since you, yeah, all beasts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I'd say you still have this duration. Like you weren't, you haven't been in this room all that long. Um, they're probably coming up soonish to a point where you'll need to cast speak with animals uh, again, which by yeah. the way, you can cast first level spells at a higher level. So oh, you're okay, out of first level cool. spells, but you could do it at second at two, level yeah. if you wanted. Okay, sick. But yeah, yeah, it works with all animals. 
I look panicked and I look around and I say, Sorry, everybody. Is, is everyone okay? Vaya is, seems like relieved to be on firm ground uh, and, and happy to be on this side of it and not have been left behind. Uh, the vultures are just like, tired, tired. I'm tired, tired. <laughs> Damn, okay. Uh, let's take a chill pill for a second and then we can we can keep moving. Yeah. The vultures just pretty much seem like they're following your lead and tired enough. And Vi only takes like a minute or two to, you know, kind of catch her breath. Okay. Let's head through the door on the other side. Sweet. Yeah, uh, I'd say probably about the time that you're going through the door, if you would like to continue communication with Vaya and these animals, you'd need to cast Speak with Animals again. Okay, yeah, let's cast after, it. After taking a little bit of a rest, yeah. All right, so I assume at a second level? Yeah, yeah, so I have one... Cool. Uh, that's the one... I have one spell left on second level. Cool. Yeah, uh, you move through the door. Uh, and yeah, as you enter through, you can see that most of this room has been caved in, but there are a few parts that can still be walked through. There are shattered beakers that line parts of the floor, uh, burnt pieces of parchments uh, that are scattered just alongside everything, really. And at the far end of this room, you see a body. It's charred and unrecognizable, and it leans against the wall. Um, and you can see a glint from a gemstone that seems to be on a ring of one of the body's fingers. Okay, I want to look around the room and make sure it doesn't seem like there's any traps set up. Yeah, roll investigation. I'm not falling for this crap again. I roll 14. You look around and you actually do find what looks to be a mechanism for a, a few different things. One seems to be like tied to something in the floor but that part of the floor is covered with rubble and there also seems to be a panel like on the ground that you might step on to cause one of those dart traps again uh mm. but that as well seems like it's been broken by this cave-in i'm gonna sort of avoid those things and walk towards the body slowly and cautiously okay. yeah you uh, you avoid those spots and uh via follows close behind uh trying to follow your lead as best as she can <laughs> yeah uh, although it's a little less dexterous moving around and yeah you approach the body and it seems like a humanoid figure it's hard to get many distinguishable features on it as it's been burnt uh burnt very severely and it seems like time has also uh done its work a bit on it awesome I look down at the gemstone on the finger, and I reach for the ring. Yeah, as you reach down um, and and grab it, like and start lifting it up, uh, like it just the finger like crumbles away, pretty much into ash. Uh, it, mm -hmm. it just very, <laughs> uh, very broken down. And yeah, you lift up a ring. You see what looks to be a. As you look at it right now, it's red, and then you blink, and you can see. Uh, it shifts colors to different hues. It, it seems to be kind of ever-changing in its color. Uh, slowly, you know, it's not necessarily like going blue, uh, yeah, orange, like you know, but it is kind of just a... Like a club strobe light. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or maybe more like mood ring Yeah, vibes. yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, I was literally going to make a joke about that. Um, I sort of make a face like, screw it, and I put on the ring. What humanoid form would you like to change into? Oh, shit. Um, half elf. All right. You feel your scales fade away and two pointy ears replace uh, or pop up on the side of your head and, you know, long hair flows down and, and you shrink down a few inches and uh, seem to be in a half elf form. Oh, shit. This is awesome. <laughs> I start jumping up and down. I start I start feeling my arms. I'm running my hand through my hair. And, and I glance over and I look at I look at Vaya with like a excited look. Uh she returns your look with a grim one. Okay. I I slowly start looking less and less excited and I walk over to her and ask her, 
What? What? Isn't this what we're looking for? I mean, this is exciting, right? I need you to give me the ring. I, I don't understand. What do you mean? There's no other way to change me back than that ring. Well, what about me? I thought we were in this together. I mean, can't we figure out... I mean, I, I don't want to give it... I don't. Are you just going to take off? I mean, what about... You know, what, what about us? What about our team? I can do what I can to study its properties and, and try to figure out how I might be able to apply something to you if you need it. I, I'm, I'm sure I can make that work. I mean, I... I, I... I've been, I've been trying to do this my whole entire life, you know? I've been looking for this for a long time. I, I've i been trapped on this island as a bear for years. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's just... Uh, I think poetically, like, my story just sort of has, like, a more well-rounded, <laughs> like, finish if you just let me have this one, you know? Like, I know it sucks, but, like, listen, I hear you. This is, like... This is it. I mean, how how confident are you that you can help me out here? Like, I I don't know if I'm ever going to have a chance like this again. I'm entirely confident. Uh, you can roll an insight check on that if you'd like. Okay, let's do it. 13. 13. You get the sense, certainly, that, like, she doesn't want to just leave you high and dry. Okay. Via. I wouldn't have been able to make it here without you. I wouldn't have survived from the spooky little ghouls. I, I trust you. I hand the ring over to Vaya awkwardly because she has two big claws. <laughs> yeah. She, I like sort of just uh, hold yeah. it in front of her and I'm not really sure what to do. She, you know, slowly and awkwardly moves a claw forward and, and, you see the ring kind of adjust in size and move around it. And you know, as you take off the ring, you feel your body shift back to uh, that of a dragonborn. Uh, and as the ring goes on her, you see her form shrink and shrink and shrink. And in front of you stands after a moment, a half elven woman uh, in certain ways, looking similar to how you just did. Uh, she does have white hair um, and, and do you get the sense, like, it, it's hard, like half elves, like age at a different rate. Um, so you can't exactly tell how old she is. Uh, but she, she looks relatively young aside from, um, the white hair. Wow. You're, 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 you're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of, uh, ignores what you're saying as she's just like looking at her hands and like, touching her arms, you know, and, and her face and, and running a hand through her hair. And like, she looks at it and sees that it's white and it kind of seems like, oh, maybe I'm not used to that, but, mm. <laughs> but, uh, she just seems like happy to not be a bear anymore. Wow. Um, how, how, how does it feel? Good. <laughs> Opposable, uh, thumbs. They're quite nice. <laughs> she just kind of like gripping it with her hand and you know, flexing her mm. muscles a bit. So what do we just, do we just hightail it out of here or what? Yes. Yeah. I, um, I have some people to get in touch with who I haven't seen in years. Uh, and we'll need to start setting some things up, getting money so that we can create our own sort of lab so that I can study things and, and, try to reverse engineer whatever magic this is okay let's uh let's head towards the door all right um yeah your vultures are still around so you'd be able to use those to <laughs> fly over the gap if you'd like yeah let's do that we, yeah, we have to have around. a vulture <laughs> yeah and you just make your way out sweet yeah um you when you know you you go through the different rooms obviously the one with the ghouls just had uh, the bodies of them. You you go into the one with the traps that were running, and you see at this point that uh, like the trap is still going off, like the trigger is still going, uh, but it seems like it's run out of whatever ammunition it had been stacked with. Mm, yeah, mine. <laughs> so it's like kind of disconcerting. It's like, doo, 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 yeah, but uh, nothing is firing. 
Um, you step over your piss puddle. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, make your way out back onto the island. Um, sweet. I start walking towards the dinghy. Yeah. Uh, the the two, two of you walk that way. She says, thank you for helping me and for trusting me. Of course. Uh, you know, I, I came into this whole thing thinking, you know, this was going to be a, a me experience. You know, I was going to do this for me. And now I sort of feel like for the first time in my life, I'm like a, like a hero. You know, I I killed a couple things. I I saved your ass most of the time. Uh, it, you know, I, 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 I feel like I did something, you know, thank you. She nods. Well, I'll need a lot of help in order to figure these things out. Can I rely on you for that? You've got my you've got my word. First, we'll need to figure out a way to make some money, though. Well, uh, let's just say that today is probably not the best day for that. I actually do have a shift over at the the boat library. Um and so, I mean, if you want to weigh back on the island, we can take the dinghy over there. Uh, it's, I think it's just around the corner. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so you want to wait until dawn? Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Okay. You can count that as a long rest then. You know, you set up okay. a little camp. Um, so you get your health back, your wild shapes back, and your spells back. Okay. I got everything back. Cool. Uh, yeah, and then you know um, the two of you rest there. Your 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 vultures disappeared at some point, and yeah, you when you wake up, you see Via like kind of kneeling over the water, like just looking at her reflection, like kind of enamored with it, just uh, not being a bear. Hmm. So I start thinking, and I start having doubts. You know, I'm not a perfect guy. I start wondering whether or not Vi is really telling me the truth here, you know? Yeah. Yeah, as you're thinking that, also roll roll an intelligence check for me. 19. Okay. Uh, continue through what you were saying. I start having doubts about whether or not Vi is telling me the truth, or even if she is telling me the truth, how, how likely it's going to be. It just felt like something fell off. Yeah, and as you kind of think it over logically as well, uh, you think about a few things. I mean, you think about one, um, the person she worked for, Bostara, he was someone who was thrown out of academies. He was, she, she even said that he was someone who was not, you know, uh, looked a- as kindly, right? Mm-hmm. And, and these experiments were happening and they eventually turned to her, but who are they happening to before? Also, she said she's been living here for years which you kind of get the sense that that's true but how would she have survived that long on an island that doesn't seem to have all that many other things other than ones that were created in the lab yeah things aren't adding up here for eric i sort of start thinking about what the logic behind all of this is and i sort of trudge over and sit down next to vaya and decide to try to pry at her a little bit. She's like still looking at her reflection as you come over. So how did you survive here for so long? How, how, you, you couldn't even get into the castle. I mean, there's nothing on this island. What, what are you doing here? And how are you still alive? She like very calmly kind of sits back. Um, well, I tried to catch fish from the water and scrounge for what was left on the trees. It's definitely gotten a little worse as time has gone on and, you know, just eating things that were around. Eating things that were around. I mean, how, how did, how, something's just not adding up here. You know, I show up on this island and somehow, you know exactly what I need. And everything that led us to get to the room, I have the answers for. Now, I'm not saying I don't believe in fate, but what are the chances 
that you needed to get through a room where I had to use my piss to get through the painting. I had to use the vultures to carry us across. And we both want to turn into half elves. Do you know who I am? She kind of gives you a look. You know who I am. I don't know who you are. Anyone could have solved those things. It was it was a painting that you could walk through. It didn't need to be your piss that did it. And yeah, but no you're, one. You're not the only one who can summon animals. Oh, no one, no one would have thought to piss on the painting except for me. Okay. Well, most people would have thought to just put a hand through it. Well, most people, most people. Uh, listen. I. I need. I need you to. Give me the ring. She looks. Why? I, as much as I want to drop this whole thing and as much as I want to let you go on and do your research and have me help you, I, I can't help but get the feeling that I'm never going to see you again once we get back to that island or once we get back, once we get back to the mainland. Uh, roll an insight check. Four. Okay. She gives a long look. And uh, yeah, you're you're kind of trying to read her face to see if there's any hints of what you're saying is true. Um, you know, just like tells glances in one direction, uh, but her face does not betray any sort of thing like that. God damn it. I continue to have this this battle in my head between taking her word because I I don't have very much reason to not take her word, but also the fight in my head of how many years I've been looking for something like this and I see it right in front of me. Mm -hmm. Yet I'm being told to walk away, go back to the boat library <laughs> and just hope that some day it, it works. And I say again, I think, I think I need you to give me that ring. She looks at her hand and looks up at you. I'll make you another. When? When I can. What? What is when I can't? Is that, is that a week? I'll study the magic. I, I, I don't know. These things take time. Do you know if your boss is still alive? It's the body that you pulled this ring from. Oh, shit. But I'm smarter than him. I can figure this out. You're smarter than him. He turned you into a bear. <laughs> it was a miscalculation on my part. It's a pretty big miscalculation, a big enough miscalculation that I, I, I don't know if I, if I can trust you. I mean, can, can, there's gotta be some way we can figure this out. Maybe it's like a divorced parent situation. I could have like the weekday with the ring and then on the weekends you could study it or something like that. Maybe we could put, put like a tracker on it or something, the phone, find my friends. She gives a long look and considers what you're saying. There's no way that you'll trust that I'll do this for you and that you'll let me have the ring. Why should I? She reaches her hand towards the finger with the ring on it and gives you a look and slowly pulls it off. And as her face starts to transform into the bare form... She says, I'm sorry it had to be this way. I'm going to need your roll initiative. <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. That's what I was hoping for. I was like, is she just going to hand it to me and it's going to be done? I would have been like, God damn it. 15. Sweet. So you see her doing this and you do kind of get the jump on her. You know, as soon as you see the ring. I mean, I imagine you're kind of in a mistrusting place, you know. Yeah. In general. So as she pulls it off and starts transforming, uh, you weren't caught off guard. Uh, and actually, you rolled higher, so you get to act first. I'm going to use the spell Entangle and try to okay. trap her. Cool. So you're probably like five feet from her right now. Do you just want it? Like, obviously, you don't want it to be on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So yeah, 20 feet. Um, so yeah, you're put a little thing around her um she has to make a strength saving throw your spell dc was what was it 14 uh yeah all right you cast grasping vines she has to make a strength save 
Uh, that's a 10. So she, the as she's like transforming and about to pounce on you, these vines come up from the ground and wrap around her. Hell yeah. Is what I say out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, she is restrained. She cannot move. Uh, I will say you are like within five feet of her, so she could still hit you. And if you want to move away from her, she will get an attack of opportunity to try to hit you. But she would have um, disadvantage to attack you uh, if if you stepped away or stayed there. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna like take a step back. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that'll provoke an attack of opportunity from her. Yeah, she rolls a eight because <laughs> she has disadvantage. So yeah, you've used Entangled. You've stepped five feet back. Anything else you want to do? No, I don't think so. Okay, yeah, so she's going to use her action to try to break from the plants. Cool. Yeah, she rolled a 23. So she's able to break the vines off of her, but that's her action, so she cannot attack. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, she will uh, take a step towards you. Now it's your turn. I am going to summon. I'm trying to find something cool. <laughs> I'm going to summon a giant elk. Okay. We love a giant yeah, elk. Yeah, it's freaking huge. <laughs> cool. So this will cause your entangle to... Uh, this will cause your entangle to disappear, which is fine because she got okay. out of it. Uh, but yeah, you create a giant elk. Here's, here is the stat sheet for it. And does it say with this that it just acts on your turn? Summon creatures are friendly to your companions. Roll initiative for the summoned creatures as a group, which has its own turns. Uh, yeah, just uh, roll a d20 and then add three to it. Okay. Um, 16. 16, cool. Sounds good. Yeah, a giant elk appears. Uh, where do you want it located? Right to, to my right. Okay, to your right. Got it, cool. It is going to be her turn and she is going to make two attacks on you. The first is gonna be, she's gonna just bite at you. A 19 to hit. Oh man. So how much how much damage is that? Uh, that'll be eight damage. And you will also have to make a constitution saving throw to see if you maintain concentration on your spell. Okay, I landed a 14. 14 is good enough. Okay. Uh, and then she's going to swing at you with her claws. That's an eight to hit. Uh, so yeah, your AC is 15. So she bites at you, which pierces into your arm and then swings a claw, but you're able to avoid it. Great. Sweet, your giant elk is up. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, so you can give him a command. And pretty much you see like he can ram, he can hit things with his hooves. Also, if he like runs at something that's 20 feet away, um, which currently from where you summoned him, he would not be. He can get like an extra bonus. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, let's have him try to ram directly into Baya. All right. So roll a d20 and add six. 19. Uh, 19 will hit. Yeah, the damage is 2d6 plus 4. Okay, that would be 11. 11 damage, yeah. Her focus seems solely on you still, but the giant elk moves its head back and just rams into Vaya, and you see like a gash come across her face uh, as she takes some damage. Starting starting to look hurt, but still, still in the game, still focused on taking you out. Uh, you're up. I'm going to try to... Cast Acid Splash. Okay. Uh, what was the save again? Is that con save? Yeah, yeah. Five. So she fails. Take 1d12 poison damage. Sweet. Yeah, roll 1d12. Two. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, you throw up a little poison in her face, and she doesn't <laughs> seem all that bothered by it uh, and still has her focus on you. Um, so that's your attack. You have your bonus action and movement if you'd like to use either of those. Otherwise, you know, whatever makes sense. I'm going to jump on the back of the elk. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to... If I can reach it. <laughs> yeah, uh, a few things will happen. I'm going to say it's going to provoke an attack of opportunity to climb up on it. 
and mm -hmm. as it moves, you might have to make some like checks to see if you can stay on because like, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's bear back on a giant elk. Um, but yeah, all right. So she is going to take a swipe at you as you run to climb onto the back of this elk. That's going to be a 19 to hit. You take six points of slashing damage. Okay. Or piercing damage. Um, and yeah, you'll have to also roll another concentration check. So another constitution saving throw to see if you can maintain concentration. 20. 20, you're good. You are on Hell the back yeah. of this elk ready to ride. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it is her turn. I'm going to say, like, positioning, because you're up on the elk, like, it's hard for her to reach you. So she's going to try to attack it instead of you right now. Okay. Um, so, yeah, she's going to swing with her claws. Uh, that's terrible. Uh, a nine to hit. What's the armor class for the giant elk? 14. 14. Not even close. Yes. And then she's going to bite. Uh, that's a 17, so that will hit. And the giant elk takes 10 damage. I'll write down the giant elk's uh, HP. So yeah, giant elk's at 32. Um, giant elk is up. I will let out a shriek and yell for the giant elk to to go after with its hooves. Okay. Uh, yeah, it just kind of rears up and begins slamming the hooves down, uh, make an attack. Oh, sweet. Um... Oh, damn, this is powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna... Oh, I think hooves actually only works if the creature is prone. Oh, one prone creature. Yeah, okay. sorry. Let's ram it. All right. Uh, roll, uh, roll the hit, so d20 plus 6. 18. 18 will hit. Uh, then roll 2d6 plus 4. 9. 9. All right. She's starting to look pretty hurt. Um, hell yeah. Hell yeah, she is. Elk's done, you're up. Let's see. I'm going to cast Bark Skin on this goddamn giant elk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's even stronger now. All right. Yeah, she's going to attack the giant elk. <laughs> Try! Uh, so, yeah, first with her slash. So, its AC is now 16. This is a 22 to hit. So, get far. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, that'll do nine damage. So I think that puts it at 23. Uh, and then, yeah, she will bite at it as well, uh, which was a 23. So that'll also hit, uh, which does seven damage. So it is at 16. Okay. All right. It is up though. Okay. Uh, do what you know, how to, what, do, do what you know, giant elk. Hit him with the ram. <laughs> All right. Uh, roll the hit. 25. 25. <laughs> it's like a motherfucker. Jesus Christ. All right. Oh my God. Uh, now 2d6 plus 4. 13. 13. Uh, yeah, as you slam, she's looking terrible. Uh, like bleeding pretty hard, pretty pretty on the edge. Okay. Uh, you're up. I, I step down from the elk. I hop off. And I don't know how much movement I have. Can I make this like a dramatic thing? Yeah, I mean, you could jump off the elf. Like, you are right next to her. So I'll say, like, I'll make it half your movement to jump off the okay. elk. But then you can walk up to her. I slowly walk up to her and I say, Faya, I need to know the truth. I need you to tell me what you know. And that's it, I guess. I kind of wait for her to respond, I guess. Okay. Are you, like, watching to see how she'll respond? Like, if she's going to attack and then you do something? Or... Um. Oh, yeah. So does it go to her move or can we, like... So it will go to her move. So, you know, it, maybe she will choose to respond, you know. But if you'd like, you can uh, do what's called preparing an action that, like, triggers when she does a certain thing. Okay. So, like, if she decides to attack, I can, like, do something? Yeah, but you have to choose now, like, specifically what the trigger is and what you would do. If she decides, instead of talking to me, to go for an attack, I will release my breath weapon. Okay. She looks at you for a moment, and, like, she kind of, it seems like the ring, you can see a little bit of glow, like, between 
one of her paws now. Like she's just kind of holding it as best she can <laughs> with her. Uh, and she looks down at it and then looks at you. And you see her bring a claw back to swipe at you. Damn. Do I... Do I... So you do your breath weapon. Shit. You you are a white dragon, so you have a cold. It's a 15-foot cone. Uh, she has to make a con saving throw, which she fails. Uh, roll 2d6. Three. <laughs> okay. Uh, this does kind of come around her and hit her hard. It doesn't like fully turn her to ice, but it is enough to knock her out. Uh, as she had uh, two HP. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, and, and she falls down to the ground. I, I walk over to her and I, I grab the ring and I hold it in the palm of my hand. And I, I walk over to the lake and I, I look out over the horizon and I start thinking about everything I went through to get to this moment. I start thinking about the power that this ring holds. And last of all, I think of the one thing that saved me in the end. The fact that I, Eric Froxroth, as a Erezoth Zealoth, was a dragonborn. And with that, I tossed the ring into the water realizing that this whole thing was not about me turning into a half elf it wasn't about me finally achieving what i've wanted for my whole life which is to not be myself it was realizing that being a dragonborn it's not it's not being a type of person it's not about the hobbies you have or or what you do with your job or how destructive you can be <laughs> or pissing everywhere and mm -hmm. being made fun of because of rumors of a uh, barbed penis. Like cats, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's about what you do with it. And, and that's what I really learned today is that I don't need to be some sexy half-elf. I, I have a gift, you know? I have a gift with animals nature and and talking and convincing people to let me borrow boats and i don't need to be a half elf to do any of that i don't need to live my life pretending to be someone else and so with that i pet my giant elk he disappears <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and i walk towards the dinghy and i i row off into the distance and that is where we will end this session. Now that's a satisfying ending. <laughs> you can't, you can't, couldn't even write these things. Uh, uh, awesome. That, that's great. I, um, oh, I, I love that. I love that the breath weapon is what ended it. That was really good. I, I was like, look You're good at this, dude. Dude, yeah. I was so impressed. Like, in the middle of that fight, I was looking over my weapons and I saw the breath weapon thing and the whole story, my whole dude, that, <laughs> the whole thing came together and I was like, dude, this is gonna be so hot. That's great, dude. I, I love that. That's that's that, I think that's a perfect ending. I uh, I was much more satisfying to me. Yeah. No, I mean, that's great. Even though some people may argue that I that Vi Vio is pretty convincingly like a good person, and I. Um, but you know, we will we will talk some more about Via in the post show and after the oh, roll. Great. If you'd like to check out the Patreon, yeah, and and figure out, you know, was this the you know quote unquote right thing to do? Would Via have helped you? Uh, we we will uh, talk about those things. I think Via is an interesting character. I think she can be read in a bunch of different ways. Um, so yeah, we will we will go over the details there after hell yeah uh but yeah nick thank you so much for playing this was great dude that was so fun <laughs> for for a moment i thought it was going to be like all right they sail off and start working together and and maybe we'll do another session at some yeah. point where he's like working for vibe but no, i think this uh having it culminate in this way is is great very good yeah uh for all of you still watching thank you so much i, I appreciate you um I hope I hope you're well. Yeah, me too. And I hope you enjoy. Thank this. you. Um, 
But yeah, uh, tune in for other episodes that will probably come out at some point in the future. And I hope you have a great day and or night. And, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. All right. It is that time again that we check in with the heroes of Cortia. First, we have Emmanuel Villop, a human wizard living in the seedy seaside city of Tiphort. Last we left him, he had been approached by Till, an old colleague and member of the Port Guard, to do a job in the Collar District. Emmanuel hadn't set foot there for half a decade. It was where he used to be stationed when he worked for the Port Guard. It was also where he almost died. He left that place behind for a reason. There was nothing good that could come from going back. No, he said to Till. No amount of coin is worth me going back there. Too much history. Too many enemies. Till sighed. I wasn't going to pay you in gold. He reached out and grabbed the cigarette Emmanuel was smoking and took a drag. I have a lead on who killed Morton. You do the job and I help you with it. Emmanuel gave him a long look, and the next day found himself in the Collar District. Then we have Aurora of Winter, a tabaxi paladin who has undertaken an oath of blindness in her pursuit to best serve justice. In her attempts to solve the murder of the Reese of a small hamlet, she narrowed in on three suspects. The Reese's wife, the Reese's son, and the Reese's brother. Aurora sought out each of them. The brother was in shambles. He could barely get through a sentence without choking up. He had viewed the Reese as a hero, and it quickly became clear that the brother never would have hurt him. The wife held herself together better. She didn't seem sad exactly, but more so surprised by it all. While she didn't fill the role of the grieving widow, Aurora didn't sense any ill will coming from her. As soon as she spoke with the son, though, it was clear something was off. His voice quivered ever so slightly as he talked. He hesitated at the simplest of questions, and his foot tapped on a consistent beat, almost making it hard for Aurora to focus on his words. She got up and closed the door to the room, and then said, So why did you kill your father? Following that, we have Nazima Alta, a ratfolk fighter who has been working on a heist that brought her deep in the dungeons of the Branian Keep, face to face with a half-elven woman being held prisoner. A gray streak cut through the woman's hair, and she sat straighter than seemed comfortable, but was unwavering in it. So, are you here to kill me or rescue me? Nazima spun her knife. What good would you be dead? She asked. The half-elven woman responded, Well, that depends entirely on who you ask. I'm Lady Drya Batullus, but I suppose you knew that already. And you are? Nazima pulled out a vial she had been given by her contact from her pouch and undid the cork. The blue liquid inside moved back and forth slowly. Nazima pricked her finger with the knife and added a drip of her blood to the mix. It turned purple. She held the vial through the bars to Drya. Drink it all in one swig. Lady Drya looked at her without making a move. Nazima felt a chill down her spine as the woman studied her. Seeing she wasn't taking the vial, she added, My name's Nazima. We don't have long. Drink it and let's go. Lady Drya smiled and grabbed the vial. Next is Keelan Damari, a mountain dwarf and former soldier who found himself in the caravan he was protecting beset by a dragon. Right as the beast was about to burn him alive, a half-elven man had run out from the woods, drawing the dragon's attention. Before Keelan knew what happened, the beast flung itself at the man, grasping him in its talons and dragging him away. Keelan watched in shock as the two eventually careened off of a cliff. He took a deep breath and looked back at the wagon. The group was doing everything they could to put out the fire, but Keelan could tell it was too far gone. He wrapped his scarf around his mouth, jumped into the wagon, and tossed out everything he could that wasn't ablaze. After stepping out and catching his breath again, he turned to the group and said, We best get walking. Then there is Pumpkin, a forest gnome running a detective agency in Bellin, who has been hired to investigate Captain Bragger to the Lord's Guard, a man suspected of being the Clearwater Killer. However, despite her regular surveillance of him, nothing he did seemed out of the ordinary. While there were places that she and her badder snuffles couldn't follow him, like Bellin's barracks and various homes of nobles, he never went anywhere he wasn't supposed to. Yes, he kept late hours, but it was becoming clear to her that the man was a workaholic, not 
not a serial killer. Pumpkin could feel the disappointment of another case leading nowhere, another dead end. And then one late night while Snuffles was out tracking the captain, she heard a knock on the door. And when she answered, she was met by two members of the Lord's Guard, who politely informed her that she would be coming with them. Next is Vern, a half-elven life cleric currently in Lowtown, a district of Teldwith located at the base of the Great Bluff. He sat on the corner of the main road, eating a chunk of hard bread. It was stale, but filling enough. He had planned to have some fruit and sausage, but ended up giving it to a family who had needed it more, as he always did. Tearing off another bite with a sharp turn of his head, he chewed slowly and looked out. Lowtown reminded him of his home, from the smell of thousands of people who bathed only in salt water to the rundown building's patchwork to stay standing. He knew he only could do so much to help. But that's what he would do, because life would have been different if someone had been there to help him all those years ago. To help them. He took one last bite, brushed off his hands, and stood up. It was time to get to work. After that, we have Tozier the Jagged, who recently arrived in Valia with his young traveling companion, Rylan. He had been looking for a place for the boy to stay, as the road was not suited for a child. Eventually, he was directed to an orphanage. Philippa's blessing. He wasn't sure why, but something about the name soothed him. From there, things moved fast. The young woman managing the home was happy to provide Rylan a place to stay. And half a day later, Tozier was packed and ready to leave Valia. He just had to say goodbye. Rylan looked up at him with wide eyes, doing his best to hold back tears. Why can't I come with you? Tozier looked at him for a long moment, surprised that the boy would even want to keep traveling with him. He shook it off. Because there are things for you here that won't be out there. Without a second's hesitation, Rylan said, But I thought all we needed was the divine light of Arathea. Tozier paused. He looked at Rylan, and then at the young woman running the orphanage. He gave a quick apology for wasting her time, and then said to the boy, Let's get moving then. Then there is Virgil Bowerstone and his band of adventurers who recently fought and killed an Aboleth. After taking a moment to gather themselves and heal, the group began searching the room. The ranger harvested teeth and eyes from the beast. The sorcerer cast spells to find and identify various treasures. The bard played a quiet song to calm them all, and Virgil gave a prayer. He had almost been lost, but his goddess had saved him again. With scrolls, gemstones, weapons, and other treasures in tow, the party worked their way out of the ruins of Bienstpola, out of the Belt Mountain Range, and back home to Dunsteer Keep. They took time to rest, to heal. The bite on Virgil's neck eventually faded, becoming just a shadow of what it once was. As the weeks went by, they thoroughly examined everything they had taken from the lair, and that was when Virgil noticed a peculiar book. Lastly, we have Oceanus Waverly, a merfolk bard who, uncertain as to how, has found themselves sailing the Immian Sea. This may seem unremarkable, as thousands of folks sail the Immian Sea every day, but for Oceanus, it was different. See, Oceanus wasn't from Cortia. They weren't from Senethalore, or the Northern Republic, or the Ivorisan Empire. They weren't even from the great city of Malison. In truth, Oceanus wasn't from the known realm of Vaya. They were from another plane altogether. They had set sail in search of adventure, ready to forge their own legend, and in doing so, sailed to a new world. The water looked a different shade of blue, the sky was a bit brighter, and the sun rose in the west and set in the east. It was new and exactly what they were looking for. Before they could really get their bearings, though, they saw a galleon in the distance, approaching quickly. And that's all. Along with the heroes of Cortia, I'd also like to thank the citizens of Allhearth, who are currently planning the Winter Dew Festival. The attendants expected at the next meeting are Adustus, Bladed SK, Ethan Hill, Faduge, Gleb Borjewski, Grizzly Melon, Jack Weird, Joachim Dahlquist, Merrick 16, Ming, Mythical Master Zero, Nursebone, Phil Emarg, Preston Metters, Rami Kabi, Ruka, Savara, Seth Flores, Seth Rollman, Softstar, and Travis Kroats. Get ready for the festivities. Bye.